Earlier this week, Panasonic launched its new products for 2018 at the European Convention in Palma, Mallorca. But it just so happens that I'm actually in Malaysia, so miles apart. But at least I have someone there, my colleague David McKenzie, who actually sent me the information and the footage. So I'm just going to talk to you about the new products that Panasonic has brought to the market, at least in the UK and Europe. Although I'm not actually in Palma, at least I'm standing right beside a palm tree here. I know, sorry, bad pun, or should I say bad palm, right? Let's get straight into the products. The most exciting product, I think, from Panasonic's event, which happened in Palma last week, was that they have actually launched a new reference class, Panasonic UB9000 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray player, which will replace the outgoing Panasonic UB900 as their flagship 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray machine. Now, the interesting thing about the UB9000 is that it seems to be targeted directly at the OPPO 205. Why do I say that? Right, the first thing to know is that the price is going to be pitched at around £999, about £1,000 for a flagship reference grade Blu-ray player. And it will also support both HDR10 Plus and Dolby Vision Dynamic Metadata Technologies. Now, we are informed that the launch will probably happen around autumn time and hopefully these dynamic metadata technologies will be supported out of the box but if the player is actually released earlier then Panasonic says that they will be able to enable these HDR10 Plus and also Dolby Vision technologies by a firmware update. And judging by the reaction to the Dolby Vision firmware update on the Sony set, I think you know a lot of people out there, especially video enthusiasts, will be quite wary about a feature that is going to be promised by firmware update. But hopefully the feature will be available at launch by the time this player is released in the autumn of 2018. Right, so that is HDR10 Plus and also Dolby Vision. And in terms of the Dolby Vision firmware, we really do hope that by the time the player is launched, the Dolby Vision profile that is loaded on the UB9000 will be the latest one that is compatible with the Sony TVs with X1 Extreme chipset. Right, now let's get into the picture quality side of things then. At the heart of the UB9000 is the HCX processor and HCX stands for Hollywood Color Experience. This is the same picture processing engine that has been used on the UB900 and the feature that we like so much is its multi-tap processing that actually upsamples from 420 to 444 from an Ultra HD Blu-ray disc. Now we know that all Ultra HD Blu-ray discs on the market at the moment is mastered to ultra high definition resolution at 420 chroma but eventually it will need to be converted to 444 to be displayed on the television and the Panasonic UB900, at least from our testing, delivers some of the best chroma upsampling on the market because what it uses is a multi-tap processing rather than the two-tap process that is employed by many other competing players out there. What the two-tap process does is to analyze the adjacent pixel, top, bottom and the sides to try and interpolate the chroma and create new intermediate pixels, but the multi-tap processing that is being done by Panasonic's HCX processor, what it actually does is to analyze even more pixels than just the adjacent pixels to create optimal pixels. And we can really see from the comparison between the Panasonic UB900 and also the OPPO 203, I did a video on this some time ago, that the Panasonic UB900 delivers slightly smoother gradation, slightly crisper detail, slightly less jaggedness on chroma zone plate patterns compared with the OPPO 203. And hopefully these advantages will be carried over to the Panasonic UB9000 as well. Right, that is the picture quality side of things. Another couple of things I need to mention is in terms of the HDR functionality. Now when Panasonic launched their new 
Ultra HD Blu-ray player at CES. At that time, we only knew about the UB820 and the UB420. There are HDR functions that are quite novel, and I'm going to talk you through them because these functions are also available on the UB9000. The first one is the HDR optimizer. What this does is to take over the tone mapping from the television. So the HDR tone mapping is actually performed in the play itself rather than by the television. So in this manner, Panasonic hopes to replace the suboptimal tone mapping that is found on some televisions. You can ask the player to actually carry out the tone mapping. Also, the second thing is the HDR adjustment feature, which allows users to adjust the brightness output from Ultra HD Blu-ray to adapt to a brighter condition. As you probably are aware by now, HDR, strictly speaking, should actually be watched only in a dim viewing environment because the standard that is used in HDR is absolute. It uses an absolute luminance standard, which means that, let's say, 100 nits should actually be output at 100 nits uh, on screen. But what Panasonic is doing is to try and balance the darker parts of the source signal and the brighter part to try and give you a viewable content during daytime. Obviously, this won't be accurate to the director's intent, but during daytime, I think what is important is that you know you're getting a watchable picture. And the third HDR optimization is in the form of the HDR to SDR conversion. On the UB900, HDR disk, when you actually feed it to an SDR display, it will only be output as SDR Rec 709. But on the UB9000, we've been informed that there is a possibility to output it as SDR Rec 2020 from an Ultra HD Blu-ray disk, which means that you can use the Panasonic UB9000 in conjunction with, a, let's say, a projector that cannot actually fulfill the peak brightness demands of HDR, but you still wish to get the wider color gamut benefits of Ultra HD Blu-ray, you can now use the UB9000 to output in SDR Rec 2020, whereas on the UB900, you can only do that if you actually purchase an external device such as the HD Fury Integral or Linker device. So that's the picture quality side of things covered. Other features is that the UB9000 will be Ultra HD Premium certified. It will have TSX certification. It will be firmware updated to support both Google Assistant and also Amazon Alexa. So you can use voice control to, let's say, fast forward or pause the movie. And another big upgrade is from the audio side of things, because what Panasonic has done is to try and pitch this player towards owners who may be considering buying the Oppo 205 and the Oppo 205 has some um, audio file quality components and what Panasonic is doing is to implement this sort of audio file grade components on the Panasonic UB9000 as well. So what we have is a dedicated audio power supply unit. We have a high performance digital analog converter we have a dual layer chassis to try and minimize vibration. We have a all metal aluminum outer layer. We have a disc base that is fixed by thick metal to try and reduce vibration and give a solid base for the disc to be played. Now, interestingly, looking at the internal components of the prototype that is shown at Palma, we can see a fan, so probably it is needed to cool down these components, but hopefully the fan noise won't be too intrusive when you're watching quieter passages in 4K HDR movies. Let's get back to the audio side of things again. I forgot to mention that the Panasonic UB9000, like the Oppo 205, will have 7.1 analog output and also balanced XLR outputs. So what do I think about this player? I think that this player is going to be the reference player for a lot of people. Obviously, we still need to get it into our testing room to review, but 
if we base it upon the best in class chroma upsampling from the Panasonic UB900, the UB9000 will have the same multi tap chroma upsampling. And also, what gives the Panasonic UB9000 an edge over the Oppo players is, first of all, support for HDR10. Obviously, Oppo may be able to support this open standard dynamic metadata technology by a firmware upgrade in the future. But for now, what we know is that the Panasonic UB9000 will support both HDR10 Plus and also Dolby Vision. And then the Panasonic UB9000 will also be able to support 4K VOD content such as 4K Netflix, 4K Amazon and also 4K YouTube which the Oppo players currently do not support. So yes, I'm extremely excited by the Panasonic UV9000 and we look forward to receiving a review sample in the near future. If you found this video useful, please click the like button and subscribe to the HGTV Test YouTube channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.